He makes videos about computers on the internet. On the internet. Timmy Joe PC Tech. PC Tech. Tech reviews. Computer parts. You betcha. What's going on, people? My name's Timmy Joe. I'm breaking computer chairs all over my. I mean, making videos about computers all over the internet and today on the program we're back with another edition hasn't been done in a while of what i like to call the state of tech where we discuss the direction technology or a certain computer product or something is going and why haven't i done this in a long time well i don't know it gets views okay to do the rumor thing but i really hate being wrong and before ces i did a lot of what's going to happen at ces videos a lot of them based off of an Adore TV leak that I was hoping, and I think a lot of you were hoping was going to be true, and didn't turn out to be so true. So I kind of stepped back from the rumors, doing real work. You see coming up in the next couple days, 780 Ti, retrospective, high-end graphics card. We're going to look at what does in games in 2019. We're also going to look at, I don't know if you spotted it up here, that's got to be the coolest SSD I've ever seen. So I like to do real things I can physically get my hands on, but when we have some real inside information and you know some things are happening, it's worth discussing. And of course, I'm talking about the launch of 7 nanometer Ryzen, or Zen 2, or the third generation of Ryzen. It's really confusing, but we have a Computex event coming up very soon, and we have an actual confirmed announcement at Computex, May 27th, Lisa Sue will be stepping on stage to, and I quote, deliver a keynote on the new high performance computing technologies. What does that mean? Well, that certainly sounds like a roundabout way of saying the launch of a new processor. I really do. I think that 2019 will be AMD's year. Whether or not they'll be able to stay on top in the processor space, I don't know, but it's certainly can be said that uh, without AMD, things would still be quad cores and things would be stagnant as all hell. And that with the release of Ryzen, it's really shaken things up. We've gone from quad cores being, you know, four hundred dollars to uh, eight cores being four or five hundred dollars on the Intel side. But being able to go the, the AMD route and save a hell of a lot of money on some sweet CPUs. Like, you can get a quad core with hyper threading in the 2400G for like 150 bucks, if that. That's, that's as good almost, you know, at least specs wise, as Intel's highest offering was just a few years ago. So they've certainly shaken up the space. And they're definitely going to be doing it again, striking before Intel can with so many delays in their 10 nanometer process, it's finally time for AMD to take the crown and we will see good old Lisa Sue do it here at Computex. I do believe so. There will be an official announcement of when you can buy the CPUs. And why I'm so confident is uh, I've actually seen a lot of these rumors here, but I have a confirmed source that says that they are receiving an X570 motherboard for review from one of the major manufacturers. And they've been told that Part availability for the new CPUs is going to be very scarce, and unless you're getting them directly from the source, from AMD, they're not going to be able to help you out, and you're going to have to probably use the old Ryzen to review these boards, because it's going to be hard to get a hold of them. So I'm worried that this is going to be, in true Intel fashion, a paper launch, and you know they'll announce over uh, you know May 27th that by July you'll be able to buy the Ryzen 7 nanometer CPUs, but it's going to be very hard to get the good ones, and there's only gonna be a handful of them launched. But I guess it's better than nothing. Strike while you can, because you might, you might as well get it, you know, uh, get ahead, it gets you some points ahead of Intel before they're able to do anything, because we haven't heard any real rumors that 10 nanometer from Intel's happening anytime soon, and there's definitely not gonna be any real performance gains in any 14 nanometer plus 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 from Intel. So it's definitely makes sense. They're, they're able to take the performance crown. That is a huge thing that increased stock prices. It's gonna happen. And you know what? Uh, the 3D guru there saying gigabytes, that's definitely confirmed. Uh, actually have not only X570 chipsets launched and motherboards being like literally, you know, parted out here, but X499 for Threadripper as well, which is very cool. Which leads me to believe the Adore TV leak is 
totally wrong, at least core count wise. There's a couple other reasons why I believe that, and we'll discuss that in just a second. So we see here ACES as well has some leaks of X570 motherboards. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. So that's definitely happened. This is a month before Computex. We will see these X570 motherboards at Computex, and I have confirmation that someone's getting one already. So maybe I will uh, you know, get an email from one of my contacts, or maybe I won't. We'll buy it if we have to. I will fight tooth and nail to get a Ryzen 7 nanometer part near launch date, that's for sure. Just for my own purposes, because I like to hold onto the parts and play with them, that's for sure. So moving on. Here's Lisa Sue, real good face, by the way, uh, over at CES. I was there, CES keynote 2019, really, really fun, but missed a lot of the uh, you know things that were supposed to happen, the launch of the seven nanometer Ryzen's, but they did do a demo. And here, we'll see what they were able to do. It's worth watching over again. With a head-to-head -head comparison against the top of the line Core i9, 9900K, running the industry standards in a bench benchmark. So note, let me tell you what we're running. We're running 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen, not final frequency, early, uh, early, um, early uh, sample, and we're Ryzen. See how weird she got there, early, um, early um, sample? I wonder what's going on there. Does that mean that this is like quite literally hot off the presses engineering sample, or they literally had uh, a, a, a proper chip that was near completion ready here, and they were able to just dial it back. She's putting an emphasis on, this is stock speeds of the 9900K, and look what we can do against it. Running stock frequencies of the, um, of the Intel part. So, Lewis and Amit, are you ready? Okay, let's start the demo, please. So, Cinebench is gonna run for a little while, what you're also seeing, um, just so you know, are the uh, powers. These are the system powers that you see from each. And um, as I said, the image on the left is um, the competing, competing processor. The image on the right um, is Ryzen. And what you can see, let's take a look at the Cinebench scores. Ryzen looks like 25, 2057. Our competitor is running at 2040. So. So 2040 versus 2057. So they were able to pick a sample and clock it to beat it by... Missed it by that much. <laughs> that much, get smart. We beat them by that much on a stock 9900K. Now, stock 9900K is getting pretty close to the absolute bleeding edge of what 14 nanometer is, is, is possible doing. I really don't think Intel's gonna be firing back this year, unless it's, you know, they've been really tight-lipped and about 10 nanometer actually being possible to ship this year, we won't see them be able to answer back with a competing processor that will beat Ryzen. They're able to cherry pick, the, uh, you know, a sample against the stock 9900K and beat it and be about 50 watts less from the wall or system power or whatever. Uh, so they have, like, it should make sense. Seven nanometer is way smaller than 14 nanometer and yeah, we're, you know, they, they should be able to pull this off. I think that there's been enough performance gap. There's definitely an IPC improvement uh, from first gen rise into the 2000 series from 14 uh, to 12. So this taking a whole another five nanometers out of it, it's gonna get them back on top. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. So yeah, I just wanted to show that, but that's not, you know, exactly how far you can take a uh, 9900K, as we all know, there is a little bit of overclocking headroom, as long as you have an ice bucket to, uh, to, to, to do it. So here's me playing with a 9900K, and we see a Cinebench score of uh, 2303, and I'm all psyched there with the ice bucket, with a rad, you know, in, in a bucket of snow. But, uh, you know, you're able to get another, you know, 160 points on what they, you know, she was competing against. Is Ryzen gonna be able to do that? I believe so. I really doubt with the wattage that they were showing, uh, with how kind of cheeky they were being about not revealing what the clock speeds and stuff were, that they actually have some headroom to go beyond at eight cores, 16 threads, what uh, Intel's doing in the 9900K, even if you have a bucket full of ice. I really do believe that that's gonna be the whole key thing with this launch. And why I'm saying that is, um, well, this leak. I think this leak is way too overzealous with how much we're gonna get out of seven nanometer Ryzen. 
I really don't think we're going to be seeing these core counts, not quite like this, especially not right away. Because if you're AMD, why would you put all your cards on the table when you're definitely going to secure a win anyways? It just doesn't make sense. And there's other information that's popped up where uh, here on Tom's Hardware, there's been a leak of a 3000 series chip uh, in some databases and stuff that has a quad core with uh, hyper threading or you know, AMD's version of hyper threading built into it. So that contradicts this chart. And I believe this chart is just kind of hooey. Maybe the frequencies, maybe the frequencies, but I think you can definitely take this, move it down, and then add Ryzen 3 to actually be quad cores, you know, with uh, SMT, you know, it would make sense. And that, you know, they'll be able to beat Intel on every single level that they're at right now with their 9000 series, you know, at, at 14 nanometer. And whether or not Intel can come back this year or in early 2020, you know, uh, it, it remains to be seen, but Intel will come back and you gotta know it. But for them to make this, the actual product stack at these prices is absolutely ludicrous. And I wish that I would have said that before CES, but we were all so damn hopeful and we believed, you know, we, we weren't hearing a rumor from WCCF Tech TV. We were hearing it from a door TV. And I think there's some validity to this chart and they might have even leaked this purposely so that they could gauge where things, you know, how the audience would react to it. But on the whole, do you really believe this is going to be happening? I really don't think so. I think we'll see fairly similar product stack to the current core counts that are offered with the Ryzen 2000 series. And they'll leave the past eight core, the 12 core and the maybe 16 core that could be launched on the 3000 series platform, they'll leave that for when Intel answers back with something because you never know just to try and get back on top. Intel might launch, you know, a, a 10 or a 12 core 14 nanometer part and try and win back the crown. They did it with the 28, uh, you know, cores special, you know, whatever, just so that they could beat Threadripper in Cinebench or whatever. And you know, th 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 that remains to be seen. But any anyways, I believe that this, is kind of who we will see like a Ryzen 3 that maybe they all have SMT and but they're quad cores uh, still six cores but they're beating you know the i5s of like well who they already kind of do but because they have SMT and the core i5s don't but they're going to be able to beat them on every level and there'll be an eight core that goes to five gigahertz or whatever the equivalent is needed to actually beat it IPC wise and we'll be very happy because there's no, we won't be disappointed as long as they take the performance crown and the prices are kind of similar to what's on this chart or even just kind of similar to the way they are now. They're very, very, uh, you know, value oriented and they, there's no way they're just going to make it all expensive just because it's close to the 9900K. That, that, there's too many ways AMD can beat Intel here and putting a 16 core part on the table right now doesn't make sense unless you go with Threadripper, which it looks like you know, in some of these rumors that there's going to be an X499 chipset and a Threadripper. So why not do the same thing? Launch a seven nanometer Threadripper at the same, you know, maybe start at 16 cores instead of there being a 12 core, start at 16 cores, go up to 32 cores. But all of a sudden at 32 cores, you're getting, you know, the, the same IPC as Intel's able to get on their 28 core and your Cinebench score is through the dang roof. And you don't need some like nuclear power plant powered cooler cooling device to cool it. It, would, it makes sense. I think the 32 core Threadripper is a little over the top here right now. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to keep cool and it doesn't get to anywhere near the frequency uh, you know, that the, the 16 cores do. So are we going to see a full on 64 core from Threadripper? Well, possibly down the line. But why would they show that? Doesn't make sense. They're already industry leading in core count in that high performance space, when you bring it up to the seven nanometer, you know, uh, five gigahertz range, or we'll say, you know, for, for that high core count, maybe 4.5 gigahertz or something like that. But the Cinebench score is there, the blender workload, you know, the, all of the ADX loads and stuff like that, they can beat them on all planes. There's no reason for them to throw cores in there when they can add those as little bonuses down the line, I guess is what I'm getting at. So what do you think is gonna happen?
I think that AMD will take the crown. For how long, we don't know. But I definitely think it's going to happen very soon, within a couple of months. I think you're going to be able to buy a Ryzen 3700 that is actually better than the 9900K. And you're going to be able to buy a Ryzen Threadripper 32-core processor that's actually better than the 28-core super crazy, uh, you know, high-end from Intel, that weird chipset that they released that only DeBauer knows about or, you know, is able to buy because it's like $40 billion or sampled or whatever. I think that's what's going to go on. So, I don't know what's going to do on Instagram Twitter. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think that this is actually going to be the launch of some 16-core Ryzen for $350? I don't think so. But... I do believe we will not be disappointed come that uh, Computex keynote and Lisa Sue will leave us happy and then she'll leave even more on the table so that they can make us happy over and over again. And whether or not Intel is able to come back by the end of the year, it doesn't really seem like it, but you gotta know they're not gonna like it when Intel or when AMD actually takes the crown from Intel. I really don't think they're gonna like it and they're gonna get their ass in gear. And it looks like Navi, if you're wondering, I haven't mentioned that, isn't happening anytime soon. I'd be surprised if it even happens this year. But seeing as there's a lackluster launch of the Radeon 7 and it was just a little space keeper, it's possible we'll see it by the end of the year. But we're also seeing graphics cards possibly coming from Intel. So there's a lot of space to make up there. That's for sure. But can AMD be the complete computing crown by the end of 2020? Probably not. Intel, <laughs> they'll be Intel, but Nvidia, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm not watching me join Instagram Twitter. This has been the state of tech. And yes, all we did was discuss a little bit of rumors and stuff like that. But we'll see. Come the copy text. How right I am here. And uh, yeah, if you want to see me do videos like this more often where I just rant at, you know, some screens and stuff like that, let me know in the comments below. But for now, wait for this. This should be fun. This is a very high end graphics card from not so long ago that. Skin pretty long on the tooth, and I wanted to see how it would do in 2019 with only three gigs of VRAM, as well as you gotta check out the fatty dove, man. That's just awesome. So we'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very much for watching. I am out watching me Joe Instagram and Twitter. There's always there's a Patreon and things in the description. And I'll see you guys in another video.